Welcome to this week's Simon. I'm Jacques. And I'm Swati of the Scientific Affairs team here at Illumina. It's amazing to think that more than 10,000 years ago, our Neolithic ancestors already began to cultivate crops. You know, human migration and subsequent differential selection by local farmers likely contributed to geographical differences in the appearance and taste of common favored fruits and vegetables. Tomato and its wild relatives originated in the Andean region of South America. Hmm. And you know, Lynn et al. construct a genomic history of tomato breeding by analyzing the genomes of 360 diverse tomatoes from various locations around the world. That's quite a big study. And, but their results indicate that humans played a major role in selecting a large proportion of the tomato genome. For example, selecting genes for size resulted in modern, to modern tomato fruit that is about a hundred times larger than its ancestor, the cherry tomato. That, that is a large difference. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you know, the tomato has a worldwide distribution and it is considered the leading vegetable crop with a global yield of 162 million tons in 2012. That's a lot of ketchup. <laughs> it also has a net value of over $55 billion. An important constraint for increasing the tomato production is natural baling. It's difficult to imagine how too much light can be an issue. <laughs> yeah, you, you wouldn't think that, but continuous light actually develops leaf injury in tomatoes, and that was d discovered in the 1920s. Well, it kind of makes sense. I mean, asynchrony in the internal circadian clock can cause issues. I know I get stressed with no sleep. <laughs> Yeah, well, Les Ramirez, uh, they set out to understand the mechanism behind these observations. And they used sequencing to identify that the chlorophyll AB binding protein 13 gene, also CAB13 for short, was responsible for tolerance to continuous light in wild tomato species. And you know, they show that in domesticated tomatoes, continuous light induces down regulation of tomato CAB13, and that continuous light exposure results in higher CAB13 expression in tolerant tomatoes. They suggest that integration of this tolerance into modern tomato hybrid lines may result in up to a 20% increase in yield. That's a lot. I mean, that is that's substantially amount. quite a bit. <laughs> But you know, another important aspect of food production is fruit ripening. Ripening tomato fruit is triggered by the plant hormone ethylene. You know, that's absolutely right. But this ethylene release is restricted until the fruits are mature and contain viable seeds. Zhang et al. studied the possibility of an epigenetic modifications that may be associated with this process. You know, it was thought that cytosine methylation may be responsible for keeping these genes turned off until the seeds are viable. Now, this was confirmed in the study by exposing tomatoes to 5-azacytidine, which is a DNA methyltransferase inhibitor, which actually caused the tomatoes to ripen prematurely. They performed whole genome bisulfite sequencing of tomato fruit in four stages of development, from immature to ripe. And they found 52,000 differentially methylated regions. That indicates dynamic changes in the epigenome during plant development. You know, it shows just how crucial it is for us to consider genetic as well as epigenetic variation in plant breeding. Today, we explored how sequencing can provide powerful and precise tools to accurately identify and select for specific traits that may provide an economic advantage to tomato production. Of course. You know, thanks for tuning into our show today. Please subscribe to get the latest episode of Simon. We'd love to hear from you. Please leave a comment below in our YouTube page and thank you and have a great day. Bye. Bye.